Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to start this video out discussing yet more updates for AMD's FSR 2.0. Honestly, this is becoming even more exciting. As many of you know, at GDC 2022, which is going to be later this month, AMD will be showcasing FSR 2.0, or what they're referring to as next generation image scaling. And honestly, we've been hearing quite a lot about the image quality. Even myself, quite a while ago, I leaked that, yeah, FSR 2.0 apparently was going to be much better than more recently. Capframe X had apparently seen a demo of it, and had also said that it didn't seem to utilize machine learning. Well, now we have yet another update, and, well, you can see on screen yourself. Next level temporal upscaling, it delivers similar or better than native image quality using temporal data and includes optimized anti-aliasing. Higher image quality than FSR 1.0 at all quality present and resolutions. Does not require dedicated machine learning hardware. Now that's quite interesting and we'll discuss more about that as well as the performance in just a moment. It boosts frame rates in supported games across a wide range of products and platforms, both AMD and competitors. Now, it's worth noting that we don't currently have access to all of the slides. AMD apparently will be disclosing more about the FSR2 technology on March the 17th with some type of teaser, and then at GDC 2022, which is going to be, again, later this month, we will learn further information. Now, I'm hoping that all of this becomes publicly available, but unfortunately, there are several things we don't yet know. One of those regards what actual card it supports, because, for example... Um, you know, FSR 1 would work on, let's say, Polaris or the GTX 980 card. So, unfortunately, at least from what I've seen so far, we don't have access to that information. Rather curiously as well, um, regarding the performance, Capframe X has mentioned that it's not quite as fast as FSR 1.0. You can see his tweet here. But honestly, I'm more than okay uh, taking that level of performance. I mean, you can see right here that in Deathloop, we basically have double the frame rate with performance mode enabled. So 53 with native resolution, and then it goes up to 101 frames per second with uh, FSR running in performance mode. Now, of course... It will really depend on what graphics card you're running and what the target frame rate is. But quite honestly, from what I've personally heard and, you know, from what all of these links are, you know, the visual quality is going to be considerably better. And honestly, if this is all true, it's going to be a huge PR win from AMD. And also, furthermore... There's a quite an interesting small update regarding the death loop story. So videocards.com actually tweeted this. I've got a tip from my friend who will travel to GDC. Deathloop will get a new third upscaling technology that's never been seen before. It works with temporal reconstruction, and it is a compute shader not based on AI or any trained model. He told me the results are incredible, easily the best he's ever saw. The underlying concept is similar to TAAU, which is UE5's upscaling, but the performance is, quote, far better. We don't know the name of the algorithm, but it's been licensed from someone and is not designed by Arcane Studios. So from what we can ascertain, this technology is actually what resides in FSR 2.0. In other words, they are the same technology. So the fact it is a compute shader is quite interesting. Now, going back to the whole machine learning thing, what this basically indicates is that it's not reliant on something like a tensor core, not that it doesn't necessarily rely on some level of machine learning. It's possible that there is some type of instruction that's running, and maybe some types of GPUs will speed it up. Again, to repeat what I've said a couple of times, I have heard that RDNA 3 does accelerate it a little faster compared to 
RDNA 2, but honestly, I really wouldn't take that with any level of confidence. At the end of the day, there's quite a bit of conflicting information regarding that. Personally, I just want to see what it's like, because it does seem like this does debut before RDNA 3, and that's what I've now been hearing as well. And again, the quality of this is apparently really damn good. I'm going to be super curious to see how easy this is to implement into game engines as well. Obviously, it's been really easy to implement FSR 1.0, and we've seen it become quite prevalent in a ton of uh, emulators, which is obviously a really good thing. That also leads us to other questions as well, like Intel's XCSS is apparently going to be really open in terms of the licensing model that they're going with, and AMD have done the same thing, of course, with FSR 1. You can see that Intel actually have taken a page out of uh, AMD's book there, so I wonder whether this is going to be the case. One of the crazier rumors I have heard is that, you know, the two do kind of, uh, that is FSR 2.0, and XCSS do actually kind of share the same instructions and therefore, you know, the same hardware can speed up and it's somewhat interchangeable. But frankly, I don't really buy that at this point. I don't think Intel and AMD would be working together in that manner. I mean, I suppose it would put a ton of pressure on NVIDIA, but again, I personally don't buy into that. It's just what one person told me kind of off the cuff. And again, I don't really believe it at this stage. Either way, I am super curious to see what FSR 2.0 is capable of. And in slightly related news, RSR2 is apparent, sorry, RSR is apparently going to be launching on the 17th of this month. So that is, of course, AMD's built-in driver upscaling technology, a little bit like NVIDIA's NIS. It will only work on RDNA-based GPUs, so that RX 5000 or later. So if you have a Radeon 7 or a Vega card or Polaris, well, you're SOL, unfortunately. The other negative is that FSR uh, generally will work on, you know, everything bar the UI. So essentially what happens is that developers can uh, opt where to plonk um, FSR in the rendering pipeline. So what's supposed to happen with FSR, and I've covered this more in depth with uh, AMD, so you can check that video out if you want a really in-depth explanation. But basically speaking, it's done before things like blurring, and also the UI itself is not um, it's not upsampled. So for example, if you're running at uh, 4K, as an output, the UI is run at 4K, but then let's say 3D elements would be rendered at like 1440p and then obviously upscaled. Whereas with RSR, this is not the case. So menus and UI, that type of thing, that will all be rendered at a lower resolution. So it is worth noting, um, Although, again, if you're running this on a game that uh, doesn't have any other option, especially if you're running like a lower end card, frankly, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I particularly think it's going to be quite useful for um, things such as like, you know, mobile solutions, laptops. I also want to give you guys a small update to the power consumption of the RTX 40 series. And this person's been pretty accurate previously. Um, obviously, I don't want to attribute certain storms to uh, certain individuals, but they have been pretty accurate in the past. With that said, power consumption figures can change pretty quickly, and, uh, well, yeah, that's pretty pretty obvious at this stage. But um, what I have been told is that, you know, it's very probable we're going to be seeing three or four slot cards, especially, particularly when it comes to AIB models. And I have been told that Halo SKUs, which are obviously AIB variants, um, which go into the stratosphere, we could be looking at like 800 plus watts. So that does seem to be what I've been hearing, which matches what Grayman was saying. But these are going to be RTX 4090 cards. And again, this seems to be like, these seem to be models that are designed around like, you know, like the, the, the water cooling or custom loot variants. And um, apparently overclocking it can actually go higher, uh, which 
I I mean, yeah, uh, I can see the memes here. Assuming this is in, it, it, this is accurate, I mean, holy crap! If it goes higher when overclocked, just oh dear. Um, but for RTX 4080s, it will be lower, and obviously reference models and so on will also be lower. So the RTX 4090 reference design. Um, we're probably looking around 550 watts, apparently, with AIB custom cards, you know, when you're paying, playing with power consumption, or, uh, sorry, power limits and all of that stuff, it could be like 650 plus watts. So we are looking at a really, you know, a ton of power consumption for the next generation cards. But I really want to stress, guys, you know, I'm hearing much the same thing as well with AMD, like, you know, uh, although uh, Nave 3 uh, X is not exactly as power hungry as uh, what we're looking at here, it is not going to be sipping power at all. Quite frankly, there have been a ton of conflicting reports on the power consumption of RTX 40. My guess, and one of the reasons I'm assuming this is the case, is because... NVIDIA have basically been testing different power consumption figures to figure out how high they can push the clocks because obviously they know Navi 3x is going to be really competitive what i have heard is that they're predicting it could be like 2.5 gigahertz for certain models but yeah i mean we're not looking at final production silicon even close at this stage so power consumption figures pricing and of course clock frequencies are still a little early to judge what i will say is that you know these next-gen cards are going to be ridiculous. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to be absolutely just ballistic in terms of the velocity that they're going to be propelling frame rates. That was a really weird analogy, isn't it? Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Uh, apologies for not being on camera for this one, but I am doing stuff in the back end. That sounded really dirty, didn't it? Um, and production will be a couple be a bit weird the next couple of days i have my birthday tomorrow which i have no idea how the hell that rolled around so quickly it seemed to just kind of sneak up on me this year but there we go and uh, i'll probably gonna be away tomorrow but there will still be content on the channel hopefully and with that said i am gonna let you all go have an amazing day take care of yourselves bye for now